Welcome everyone to Lucha World Podcast episode number 75. This is Alfredo Esparza, solo this week. Kurt is uh, Kurt is busy watching Lucha Underground. He's binge watching it on Netflix and he's unable to be here this week. As usual, this show is sponsored by Amazon.com and Designed by Humans. Check those two sites out. Uh, Designed by Humans has a lot of cool t-shirts for you guys and they always have sales. I think they have a sale almost every weekend practically nowadays. Either they're doing worldwide free worldwide shipping or a, per, a 10 or 15% off sale or a two for one sale. They do a lot of sales. So um, check those, check that site out. If you're into a lot of cool different um, t-shirts, sometimes they have Lucha t-shirts. There's actually one on El Santo on there. If you search for Santo, it's on there. It's really, it's, it's cool. Um, it's like a, I think it has four different, um, it's like a comic book looking um, design. Check out our website. LuchaWorld.com. Check out uh, the podcast site where you can find not only the Lucha World podcast, the Lucha Classica podcast, um, Slam and Stand, and all the interviews we do um, every time we go to shows. Just posted the Trauma 2 interview. I think every weekend we've been going to a lot of Lucha shows lately. We went to a show in LA about three weeks ago, and then two weeks ago we went to an Oxnard show, Lucha show where we had a chance to see Nero Casas again. Nero Casas Felino and um, Zacarias El Perico. I tried to get interviews with Felino and Zacarias El Perico, but but that didn't work out. We we told Nero Casas we wanted to interview all three. I think he forgot. or And I'm pretty sure Zacarias isn't a... An, as we found out later, he's not a very um, talkative individual, at least for interviews, as far as interviews go. And um, so, so uh, I think towards the end of the show, I went and asked Felino if we could inter- um, we could interview them, and he said he'd send Negro Casas out, and he actually did, which was really cool. I think Casas, t- we did an interview for about eight ten eight to ten minutes, and he talked to us for about fifteen twenty minutes while he waited for um for Felino and Zacharias to come out. Um, Felino suffered like a, a I think he might have suffered like a bruised leg or something because he said he was getting a massage so that was that was an interesting interview um th- that the show we went to where we saw trauma to dr cerebro mano negra matematico if i don't know if you guys saw that but matematico on the on the on the lucha poster was a way younger looking dude like it was, the guy's face was a lot fatter <laughs> so when we go to the show we see matematico the original one who's a tiny guy and he's like he, he's kurt said he's 76 years old I haven't checked if it, that's accurate because I mean, if I, when I went to, when I went to Wikipedia, I saw that they had Mano Negra's age at fifty eight. So when I saw Mano Negra, I go, "Hey, you're you're looking good. I mean, fifty eight years old. I thought you were a lot older." And he's like, "No, I'm sixty six. And so that kind of surprised me. But and back, back to Mano uh, Matematico, we see him and we're like, "Where's the other guy?" I mean. I it can't be it can't possibly be him wrestling, and sure enough, about like. A, about an hour later, we saw Matematico wearing his um his jumpsuit, his blue jumpsuit, and we're like, wow, he's going to be the one, one wrestling. And the good thing for him was that he was wrestling with Doctor Cerebro and um, Trauma Two, guys who could pretty much work with anybody, and they they made sure that he did it. <laughs> he didn't break down on anyone. Um, so yeah, that that was an interesting show. We'll probably do a we'll probably add a a bonus podcast just talking about those two shows because a lot there was a lot of interesting stuff that went on. Especially in the Oxnard show, that show was a little bit. Um, we missed the the early part of the show, which we'll talk about probably when Kurt's when the next time Kurt's here. But yeah, the, the semi main event and the main event were really good. I didn't see anybody record those shows. They might have. I, I haven't. I haven't checked. But the the semi main event was really good. Local guys, um, a lot of blood in the match. Um, the Casas match. I don't know how the Casas. I haven't watched the Casas match in L.A. But the one in Oxnard, the the, the Peste Negra match was really um, a lot better than the than the tag match that they had when Casas came here in 2014. Uh, Nero Casas remembered Kurt. Well, he remembers Kurt because Kurt. I'm sure most some of you guys follow or have become friends on Facebook with Kurt, and you've seen that Kurt puts up a lot of pictures of himself, like you know, with wrestlers or with family or with friends. And he's always making these funny faces or when he's at, at work or anywhere where he's making like funny faces and stuff like that. Well, um, Nero Casas, as soon as he sees Kurt and Oxnard, he's like, 
He's like, hey, hey, I know you. You're the guy that makes funny faces on on Facebook. <laughs> and he just like gave him like a he shook his hand and stuff. And then he said hi to myself and Dan Farron who went with us. And um, he remembered all of us because um, he told he mentioned that as soon as we we said hi to him, he's like, is that the same ring that they had at that one show? And I and I thought he was talking about the show. The this was on a Sunday, so I thought he was talking about the Saturday Saturday LA show. And um, he said no, and I said the Saturday show, and he's like, no, no, the the one from a few years ago. And I was like, holy shit, this guy remembers us and from 2014 for from a like a 10 15 minute interview and us just waiting for him to like talk to us. And and he said, yeah, he remembers us, and he asked us how we were doing and everything. So it, it was it was a really fun. Um, Fun, fun meeting, seeing him again, meeting uh, Felino, who, I mean, just a great group of guys. I mean, it's amazing how much I don't want to I don't want to shit on American wrestlers because I think a lot of them are cool. I mean, we've we've had a lot of good um, experiences with a lot of the guys, but I think our experiences with the luchadors, the guys from Mexico have been a lot. have gone a lot smoother. I mean, other than one or two guys, but usually with the American guys, it's almost like you almost don't know if you should talk to them or not. And um it's very different. Um, yeah, so that's what we've been doing. Uh, I think, I don't know if, uh, I think the Traumas and Nergo Navarro are going to be here next Sunday. So I don't know if we're going to go to that show or, because, I mean, we've been going to a lot of shows. And I know Kurt goes to a lot more stuff too than, <laughs> he he goes to other stuff with, he's got a lot of interest. And then I have a I have a lot of stuff that I do with my family. And, you know, I think Easter's coming up someday. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll skip Easter and go to some Lucha show instead. Um, this past week, March 29th, uh, Dardo Aguilar, a luchador from the 70s and 80s, passed away. Um, I don't think they mentioned what he passed away from. He was, I think he was 74 years old. Uh, Super Luchas had a really nice article about his career. Um, Carlos Acosta did a really nice job on this. Um, Dardo Aguilar basically started in Pista Arena Revolución and had a brief run in the EMLL for a bit. Um, he wrestled in EMLL as El Mago and had uh, actually held briefly the Mexican National Lightweight title in 1975. That was actually in Pista Arena Revolución. When he went to EMLL, he, he wore the mask and became El Mago. Um, lost the mask to um, Talisman and Arturo Beristain, who was Talima, Talisman and later Hijo del Gladiador. He was on CML Informa and was talking about how um, he was talking about some of the memories he had with Dardo Aguilar and said he was a very good wrestler. One of the things that was very interesting was um, Dardo Aguilar, after he left the MLL, he went to a pavili- um, the, the, the promotion that was running out of Pabilón Azteca, where he became El Avispón. Later, he dropped that uh, that um, that gimmick. I think he just dropped it. He didn't even like. Un- he didn't really lose it. Uh, he didn't lose a mass match. Just dropped the gimmick, and um, he was he teamed he teamed with. Um, they put him in a tag team with Super Muñeco and Super um, Super Raton. So he, technically, he was the original member of Trio Fantasia, and then later on, um, they started switching him with um, Tigre de Bengala. And then later on, Super, Puni- Super uh, Pinocho took over the spot, and he became the regular trio member of um, Trio Fantasy. I, f- I found that very interesting. Um, there's actually a nice um, article in, on Super Luchas about that promotion that uh, a lot of people refer to it as Super Muñeco's promotion because it was the or the Kitty prom- Lucha promotion where all they they came they they later came up with the idea of running um, shows with gimmicks of. You know, cartoonish characters, Super Muñeco, Super Raton, Super Pinocho. Um, later on, they also had, I think they also had Batman and Robin. Um, they had Darth Vader. There were a bunch of different characters. And um, that's actually the, the promotion. Well, he Dardo Aguilar was one of the veteran, you know, the wily veteran guys who was normal looking. So, you know, you didn't just have, you know, kind of like when you look at Titanes in the Ring, with, um, which Kurt always brings up, um, where they basically had a lot of these um, fun gimmicks, but you always had at least a couple of guys who were doing a serious type of gimmick or just being a regular luchador. And that's basically what Dardo Aguilar was. Um, his last big, uh, his last brief, you know, famous run, um, he wrestled as Gallo Colorado in AAA, where he teamed with um, with, Giro, with Hiro. And um, I think that was at the very beginning of um, AAA. 
didn't last that long. They were the guys that ring. They, they didn't really last that long. And then afterwards, I think that was pretty much it for him. Um, as far as a national spotlight, he wrestled briefly as, um, as Yin Yang in 1999, but that was mostly just in the Pista de Arena Revolución area, the, that, that area of, um, he also wrestled in, um, UW as an artista in, in El Torreo. Uh, we'll probably have more on him and, um, the Lucha Classica podcast, the upcoming one. Speaking of the next Lucha Classica, I think the next Lucha Classica podcast will be available next week uh, for those of you who subscribe. That all depends on Kurt because Kurt's Kurt said he'd probably come over and do, record that show at some point this week. We're supposed to do it or, or, um, this on WrestleMania weekend, but um, Kurt's like I said, we've been we've been been going to a lot of shows. I think he might have. Um, he might have caught the a sinus infection or something, or but yeah, the Lucha Classica show. The next one we'll probably be talking about Jack O'Brien. Um, there's a there's a there's some stuff from the 1930s. I'm trying to think. Um, Jack O'Brien, El Santo, and all these different characters. Um, the 1950s. There's um the Great Scott. I wanted to do the show with Kirk because um there's some stuff on the Great Scott um, feuding with Medico Asesino, stuff like that. So. So those of you who subscribe to that have that to look forward to and we'll also probably add a bonus show where we'll probably talk about our trips our last two trips to lucha shows you guys can hear the our story of um waiting for narrow casas and and all this other stuff that that went on during the during our day our day in oxnard and in east east los angeles other news as i mentioned earlier um speaking of Zach zacharias el perico April 30th is Kids Day in Mexico, and CML usually runs a, a Kids Day type of show. Well, this week, this year, they decided to hold a special attraction match, and it's going to be the mascots in a tag team match. This past Wednesday in CML Informa, they had um, Zac Zacarias El Perico, Mije, El Guapito, El Gallito, and Microman on as guests. And uh, Microman is a new um, debuting mascot uh, he he was he was basically kemonito size when i saw him i thought it was kemonito just being re-gimmicked to do to, just so he could wrestle but then you think obviously if it was if they were going to do this they would obviously want kemonito in the match because he's a bigger draw than say him going under a different gimmick but i guess he's not i, I don't think he can I, I don't think he's mobile enough to do a full um Whatever I I don't know what they're gonna do, I, but I, maybe he's gonna be like a, a gonna do a run in or something. Uh, but basically, they were on the show. Um, El Guapi, the, what they announced was El Guapito is gonna be the special referee for a tag match, which is gonna be Mije and Zachari Zacarias El Perico versus Microman and El Gallito. They um, Mije was very angry throughout this interview. Zacharias not only did he not speak. Um, he pretty much didn't really seem that interested in being there. And then we later found out that his voice is very deep. Pretty much, he pretty much is the Barry White of Lucha Libre at this point. I mean, really deep voice. Uh, Microman seemed very friendly and easygoing. Gallito was very respectful, very professional. Um, he, somebody made a comment about him dressing up like um, Daniel Bryan, <laughs> which, you know, with the with the with the flannel shirt and um, the the khakis. But yeah, they, they, it was it was funny. They they basically ended the entire segment with um, Zachariah spearing Microman, and then came on um, then Mije and um, El Gallito getting into a brawl with with um, Guapito trying to um, break everybody apart. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I hope they put at least some highlights of that. Other CML news. Uh, CML. We haven't done the show since uh, I think we haven't done the show since March, like the week before. Um, Dos Leyendas. If you haven't watched Dos Leyendas, I think it's I think they're still making it available for three bucks on YouTube uh, or through CML.com, whichever the two you want to go through. Uh, the the show really, if you take out the the main event, which was awful, and the opener, the women's match, which was pretty bad, um, the rest of the card wasn't that bad. Um, the women's match I thought was really bad. It, it was funny because the week afterwards they had another women's tag match and that was a lot better. It, it didn't have Marcela or um, I can't remember who else. It didn't have Marcela or Amapola actually in that match. They were, they had, um, instead of them two, they had Reina Isis and Silhouetta. And that match was a lot better than um, than the than the Dos Leyendas women's match. 
Estrellita fell flat on her face doing a dive. Looked very painful. Um, she's, she mentioned in, in commentary last Friday that she was still recovering from her rib injury from that fall. They're still continuing the Princesa Suhei Zuxis feud. Hopefully that goes somewhere and it might now that WWE announced that they're going to do the women's tournament in the summer. Uh, I, They kind of mentioned they're going to have women from around the world and I think 17 countries. And I would think Suxi and Chick Tormenta, one of them or both will end up being in that tournament, I would assume. I wouldn't be shocked to both. And, you know, really what might happen is that they might be in that tournament, then we'll probably not be no, not be sure if they'll be part of WWE beyond that tournament. Because I think CML is actually letting the people go to that, you know, as they did with Mascara Dorada, now Grand Metallic, and then finally like decide if they, they if they if they get a deal, then they can go on to WWE. But that that I'm guessing that Suhei and Zuxis are kind of like that a back burner mass match that could happen at some point. But then again, it's CML, so no one ever knows, and it might not happen. Zuxis actually wore a mask that was a tribute to um, Negro Navarro, who trained her. Second match on the card was probably the best match on the card. Dragon Lee, Stuka Jr., Titan beat Euphoria, Gran Guerrero, and Niebla Roja. That was really good. I thought that was the best match on the card. Really the one match you probably should go out of your way to watch. I think it'll probably be... Actually, I don't know, because... Um, the iPay-Per-View, you pretty much have to order it on iPay-Per-View or wait till somebody posts the, the Samurai TV version of the of the show on online. Um, but yeah, that's, pr- that's pretty much the one match that you sh- should definitely go out of your way to watch. Um, the third match was Rush, La Mascara, and Cranio beating um, Atlantis, Caristico, and Marco Corleone in two straight falls. That was okay. I, I didn't think it was that great or that... It wasn't. It was good, not not great or anything like that. Just just a fun match that had these guys involved. Cranio is a lot better than Piro. I'll tell you what the Ingobernables match. If you listen to this podcast, you know I hate the Ingobernables trios matches. Replace Cranio, replace Piro with Cranio, and you're already an, at an upgrade of a trios match. Um, Ultimo, Ultimo Guerrero beat Matt Taven to retain the NWA World Historic Middleweight Title. Um, I thought the match was good, not great. Taven's very um Taven's okay, but I mean you see so many more so many better American indie guys and he kinda comes across he kinda strikes me more as like somebody you would see like on a on a WWE show, you know, like the very very um plain guys. He doesn't really do a lot of stuff that you really he doesn't really do anything that really is differentiates himself from other guys. You know, like you could watch like a Ricochet and or a, a Jeff Cobb or Johnny Mo- even Johnny Mundo, they do something that's completely different than than other guys whereas um, Matt Taven really just he's just there, he's okay. I I didn't think he was that. I thought I thought Ultimo Girl kind of carried the match a little more and kind of made it a little better than it probably could have been. Although Taven, I'm not saying he's awful. He's a lot better than like he's better than Piroth or Yoshitatsu. So, and he's better than a lot of the, I, if you told me to like, if you told me to pick like a foreigner of the guys who've been, and actually he's probably had better performances in CML than Johnny Mundo has had in AAA. So I can't really like hate on the guy that much. So, but he's, he's, like I said, you got to watch him more or less to more kind of see that he's kind of like a generic type of um, American wrestler. Not, not, doesn't really bring anything different to the table. The fifth match was Mystico Volador, Volador Jr. and Valiente beating Mephisto, Luciferno, Echicero to retain the CML World Trios titles. Echicero replaced Efesto from, um, he basically suffered um, some sort of blood poisoning that resulted in him having, um, Efesto having, requiring surgery. So hopefully, they say they'll be back in about a month. I know Negro Casas said that too, because I asked him about the, the trios tournament, the the national trios title match that they're supposed that the Casas family is supposed to get, and he said that he knows it's in he knows it's in CML's plans. It's just a matter of when it happens. But I think you could pretty much make that co- comment about everything involving AAA or I mean CMLL and AAA too. So, so um, this match was actually pretty good. I thought Echicero looked really good in the match. 
Um, I kind of hope they, that, that this continues where Echicero starts getting more of a push. I'd like to see him work more with um, those with Volador Jr. and Mystico and those guys, just because I think he's he could make them look a lot better and he's really good in the ring. Um, the main event, Diamante Azul beat Pierrot in the mass match. Match was pretty bad, but actually I think it was better than Volador Jr. versus Yoshitatsu just because they kept it very, very short and they kept it very simple. So there, you knew there wasn't going to be anything like over. they were going to do overboard. Plus, you had Rush and uh, Maximo kind of involved at, at certain points and La Mascara, Terrible, Marco Corleone, all those guys getting involved. The finish ends up being where everybody gets involved, get everybody runs out and the ref kind of gets distracted. And then the Amantes with German suplex is um, Pierrot for the win. Pierrot unmasked. And it, he's revealed to be Arturo Munoz. He still claims to be 47 years old. If he's 47 years old, man, he had his kids at a very young age, which is possible, you know. But um, he... Um, so now the big controversy with Pierrot is basically... He, he's basically now referring to himself and other people are referring to him as La Bestia del Ring, el La Bestia Ingobernable. So now, and then he, on, on Informa, he basically said he was no longer going to be Pierrot because he knows people keep calling him that and he knows um, he's not Norberto Salgado, who was the previous Pierrot or the bigger named Pierrot, the star, the star Pierrot. And he's basically like, he doesn't, he's not going to take the name anymore. He's now Bestia. Bestia del Ring or Bestia Ingobernable, Arturo Munoz. So what happens the next day? Um, CML calls him. The next show, the CML keeps calling him Puro. So, you know, that's basically CML because, I mean, I think Bobby Villa is really the only one that's kind of, they've kind of gone with Bobby Villa. Like, once he said Bobby Villa, they start calling him that. But um, how long did they take with the whole Bobby Z, Bobby Zavala thing? Um, there was a couple of other guys that they've kind of had this weird situation with. Um, Angel de Oro won the CML World Middleweight title from Dragon Rojo Jr. on March 25th in Arena Coli de Sale. Uh, we didn't get any match highlights from that. I think there's no, I don't think there's even any highlights. There might have been, I think there might have been some highlights, but I don't, they didn't, they didn't record the match. I think what ended up being, I think, I think Alexis might, Salazar might be the one that has highlights and posted them or made them available on Informa. And, um, but that ends a long reign. I think Dragon Rojo Jr. held the belt for like a little over five years. He beat Jushin Thunder Liger for the belt. Angel de Oro, very happy about winning the belt. They interviewed him like two or three times since that. And it's like, man, that's too many Angel de Oro interviews within one week. You know, that's that's a bit much. Uh, the March 24th show, the week after, Dos Leyendas. Uh, actually might have been a better... It might have been a better show than Dos Leyendas. The minis match was actually pretty good with um, Sharkercito and Electrico. Demos 316 and Pirotito beat Sharkercito and Electrico. The women's match, as I said, was a lot better. Dallas and Zuxis and Reina Isis beat Silhouetta, Princesa Suhey, and Sanelli. I said on the Lucha Talk podcast that Sanelli looked better in this match because she wasn't running the ropes. But uh, my co host on that show claimed that. I was blinded by Sanelli's outfit, her bodysuit. It's possible that might be the case. Um, but, you know, I thought she looked a lot better in the match. Reina Isis still is pretty bad. But Silhouette, Silhouette that looked a lot better in this match. I think a lot of people are like, well, she's always been good. But no, she, she can be pretty bad in a lot of these women's trios matches. I think the problem is that they're so repetitive. These, they they got to cut back on the women's trios matches. It wouldn't, it, would it hurt them to have like a tag match? Or a singles match with the women because I think there's only like 12 women on the roster if they're lucky they have 12 women and I think sometimes these trios matches when they do them and they end up airing two of them in the like I think in, within a month you might watch like what maybe like five or six in a month I think that might be too many t- women's trios matches with that combination with that group because I mean it's really the same group all the time and kind of wish they'd mix it up like with some singles and tag team matches Cranio, Ripper, Echicero beat Maximo, Sexy, Titan, and Stuka Jr. This match was really good. I highly recommend watching that. I'll probably link to it on the on the comment on the description. 
Um, really good match. Echicero is amazing, amazing in this match. Working with Titan and Maximo and Stuka, really working with anybody. Uh, but it's a really fun match. Cranio doing his um his his um you know his human cushion spots where he gets basically he everybody dives does dives towards him. Um, really fun match. Highly recommend it. the The following match was a, another good match. Niebla Roja beat Dragon Lee in a match for Lampago. That was good. Niebla Roja had quite the couple of days. He's still feuding with Dragon Lee. We finally got to see a singles match between them, even if it's the match for Lampago. This past Tuesday, he kind of had a little bit of a... He was kind of had some different views on how the match, the girls in um, Del Lagunero should... How their match should go on, a t on, on Tuesday. He didn't want to do the periquera. He didn't want to do the girl spots that they always do. And so the other guys kind of got annoyed by him and they got upset. Niebla Roja kind of ended up costing them the match or something. They felt like, that he costed them the match, so they attacked him afterwards. And so now we're, it looks like Niebla Roja might be on the outs with the girls Lagun Laguneros. They're kind of doing the whole um, Ultimo Girl doesn't, didn't know because he wasn't at, at, on that Tuesday show. So now they're going to have a, a meeting to determine if they're going to continue with Niebla Roja as part of the group. Niebla Roja said he still wants to be in the group. This, the, the, this is one of those, I don't really mind if they make it a long, ongoing thing because it's, I think everybody else that runs wrestling now, everything goes so rushed, you know, with AAA, Lucha Underground, WWE, everybody rushes through all this stuff that I don't mind if, if CML is still going to do the slow um, turn type of thing or the slow split up thing because that's what they used to do in the past. I mean, like, like when I was going through the Viano 3 Atlantis stuff, a lot of the Tarzan boy um, turning and all that stuff, that that went shocker shocker turning that lasted months before that finally they there we finally got a payoff off of that that was a good match definitely recommend it um dragon Lee, niebla roja roja hopefully that's like the i wouldn't mind that being the anniversary main event really cuz i think niebla roja is really good um dragon Lee's great so hopefully we get more of their singles matches and not just the match for Lampago. They have Puebla and Tuesday shows. I mean, they could show that. They could give us a, a, a singles match every once in a while on that show, on those shows. Um, the fifth match was Mystico Angel de Oro Valiente beating Negro Casas, Barbara Cabranario, and Felino. That was also very good. I thought it was good. More of an entertaining match than anything else. Really fun to see those guys. Like I said, we're, we're getting these combinations of Mystico, Valiente, and Volador Jr. where they're teaming together or, or they're teaming with other people. But it's always those two, those three, and Dragon Lee and Caristico thrown in the mix. Angel de Oro, I guess they're throwing him into the mix also. But I thought that was a good match. The main event I thought was, you know, it was all right. Diamante Azul, Matt Taven, Volador Jr. beat La Mascara, Pierrot, and Rush in two straight falls. You know, it was all right. It wasn't something I... I really don't remember much of it. It wasn't that. It wasn't that memorable. Uh, then we get to this past Friday show, where we actually had some. It was actually it wasn't that great of a show. This, the I think we the Dos Leyendas was good was okay in in the okay good range. The March twenty fourth show was good, and the March thirty first show was you know you know passable, you know nothing nothing great, nothing that good but in actually the the main event was okay but it's like it was a show that you were you know a fun show to watch if you have um if you have the time um the opener i thought the best two matches were really the opener and the actually the opener the third match and the main event were probably the best matches on the card um opener stuquita and ultimo dragoncito versus mercurio and pequeño nitro um the rudos won that match if i recall um I thought that was pretty good. Stuquita's always fun. I think they should have Stuquita work every Friday opener. He, because I mean, you, they don't let you, they don't let anyone do dives, but at least he finds creative ways to still do a dive. Like he'll do a plancha to the to the entrance ramp, or he'll do a plancha off the guardrail. You know, little things like that. Um, the women's match was really bad. I didn't like it. Princesa Suhei, Haruchita Scotty versus Zuxis, Amapola Tiffany. Yeah, I wasn't I would skip that. Um the the third match, Mascaraño Dos Mil, Sansón Cuatrero beat Blue Panther, the Panther and Blue Panther Jr. 
I thought this match was pretty good. Not great, just pretty good. Sansón Cuatrero are really these guys. These guys should these guys should be in main events by now. I mean, they're really good. They're 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 the type of guys that are already like they're young, but they're capable of capable of headlining at this point. Um, they might actually be better than the than their um, their father and their uncles in terms of in terms of work rate. They're probably better. But I think Cien Caras has them beaten charisma, although Sanson shows they both show Sanson especially shows a lot of the the charisma that his that his dad has. Uh, fourth match was Volador Jr., Maximo Sexy, Marco Corleone versus Mephisto, Puroth, and Cranio. This was really bad. Skip it. Fifth match, Diamante Azul, Stuka Jr., Valiente versus Negro Casas, Ultimo Guerrero, Rey Bucanero. Skippable. It's it kind of it was better than the previous match, but it's like you know it was just there. And the main event was Rush versus Matt Taven. Matt Taven actually won the match, um, which means, and then he, they did post match promos. Um, not only did Matt Taven say he was going to come back, but he also said he wanted a shot at Ma- uh, Maximo Sexy's world heavyweight title. So we're still getting more Matt Taven. I guess he's the best wrestler in Ring of Honor. I mean, obviously. I don't watch Ring of Honor, but I'm assuming he's the best wrestler in Ring of Honor. Um, you guys can disagree with me. Maybe you watch Ring of Honor. But, I mean, if there's better wrestlers, I would think they would actually send somebody different every once in a while. But, obviously, Matt Taven's, like, the best one, and that's the only option, the only guy that CML must have. You know, speaking of CML, they really need to get somebody who can scout Ring of Honor and New Japan. Because, I mean, we're getting Yoshitatsu and Matt Taven as the guys coming in. Yeah, we, they need help on that department. The other CML news was um, I don't know how I don't know how often we bring it up, but I think it might have been like a couple of ep- a couple of podcasts ago. It might have been in the one of the December or January shows where um, the whole Daniel Bryan when he's when his WWE contract ends, he would consider going to like you know a CML New Japan Ring of Honor type of deal. Well, um, this past WrestleMania weekend. Uh, in Orlando, medio tiempo. I think it might have been Apollo Valdez who took um, who took um, a gift for him from that was given to Di- Daniel Bryan by Blue Panther. It was a, a, an autograph mask and a video message inviting Blue pa- um, inviting Daniel Bryan to go to um, CMLL or to go visit Blue Panther so they could um, they can um, maybe have a match. And invited him to ex- um, to exchange, you know, knowledge in in terms of wrestling. And for those who don't know, Daniel Bryan is a huge Blue Panther fan, which I think most of us, I think a lot of us, lucha fans who grew up in the you know like from eighty nine forward, we're probably big Blue Panther fans also. So um, yeah, that was interesting. Um, I'm kind of curious if that really would happen. Hope it does. I don't know. I mean, depending on his health, really. Because I think Daniel Bryan would be really fun in CMLL. But you, the real question is, does CMLL know who Dan, Daniel Bryan is? I mean, would they actually be like excited about this guy wanting to work there? Or would they just be like, ah, oh, man, come on. another Who's this guy? We could get Matt Taven. We could get um, we could get Yoshitatsu at, the, at, half, at less than the, the price. And that's the other thing, the price. You know, I don't think Daniel Bryan's going to... Well, you know... Considering he's a big fan and maybe this is like he wants to cross it off his bu- bucket list, maybe he would be flexible enough where he would say like, "Hey, I'll, I'll work for whatever amount you want, but let me like do something merchandise wise where I can make back the money on my end." Maybe he would do that. I think that would be kind of cool. I think that might be the most exciting news right now from um, from the two promotions in Mexico because there's a lot. Of not, there's not much going on. Um, just a lot of crazy stuff. With AAA, um, I think that's it with CML this week. Let me think. No, that's about it. As far as AAA goes, I actually watched part one of Ray the Reyes. Man, that show was bad, really bad. I don't know how. I don't know how. I mean, I thought Impact was bad. This might have been close to as bad as Impact. Uh, I don't want to be that negative, but. The, the announcing at the beginning, they start arguing and start talking about Vampiro. They bring up Vampiro. I think every third word was Vampiro on this show. Um, this was the Ray, uh, Ray the Reyes show. The so it's like you're getting him constantly being brought up because he's the the you know the talent coordinator now and director of talent and stuff like that. 
basically the GM on TV also. The show itself, they opened with the cage match. Dark Cuervo and Dark Scoria beat Macias and Pagano to become the number, number one contenders to the AAA World Tag Team titles inside a steel cage. They opened the show with a steel cage, which I already know Like a lot of the old-timer fans are probably like, man, they're starting a show with a steel cage. What's wrong with them? But um, I was I, I was indifferent to it because, I mean, sometimes when you're watching uh, AAA shows, they, they show the matches out of order. So, I mean, this you know, for all you know, if you're not following it, this could have been the main event and you would have you wouldn't have noticed the difference really because they they show a lot of their shows sometimes are, are their matches are out of order or they don't air some stuff because guys are constantly leaving but i thought this match was pretty bad i didn't really like it they basically the finish too was really um you couldn't really tell how what happened first of all the fans were confused because um it basically ended with um messiah spearing spearing i think scoria through the cage and it's like and they count it they counted that as um as as, uh, as scoria being the first one to touch the floor so they automatically gave them the win but then at the same time like they edited it they they had this weird edit where um where you get the them announcing if it, they're wondering if um if scoria won and then all of a sudden you see cuervo on the floor next to him so we don't know if cuervo Cuervo climbed out of the cage and and if that also like led to that but all you see is them on the floor and they gave them the win because and the announcers were saying well Scoria hit the floor first because he got speared so he was given the win um I thought that was really lame I guess they're uh the following taping this past Friday um Dark Cuervo and Dark Scoria actually main evented the AAA show and beat Aerostar and Drago for the AAA world tag team titles and Pagano attacked both of them, so I guess they're basically gonna they're gonna go with the program of Pagano and Messias tagging up to feud with these guys. I guess kind of sad that Aerostar and Drago lost because I thought they really that one. You know, as soon as they started talking about creating a, a trio name for the Aerostar Drago Arhenis trio, man, that didn't last. Now all those guys are all like, I guess I, they, for all we know, Aerostar and Drago might be separated. And you were not going to get this trio because I think Ar- Argenis now is like teaming up with Hijo del Fantasma higher on cards too. So they've kind of not, they've kind of just switched all of that. Let's get back to Rey the Reyes. Um, the the women's number one contenders, it was a, it was a battle royale to determine the number one contender to um, tie the title to, for a title match later in the show. Later, the set on, it would, it's going to air on part two. Ayako Hamada beat, ended up winning, but the eliminations, basically they got rid of Fabi very early in the, in the basically seconds into the match. So you basically had La Yedra, Goya Kong, Lady Shani, Big Mommy, Ayako in there. And I thought Ayako looks, looked a lot better. I mean, she blew away everybody in this in, on this TV show. She was like the one bright spot on this show. Um, she looked really good in this. Lady Shani looked really good too, um, a lot better. The other women weren't very good. Yedra, Goya Kong, and and Big Big Mommy was okay. Like I, I didn't think she was that bad in the in the match, but I actually thought this was a lot better than Ray, the Ray the Reyes match because there were fewer people involved also. And Ayako Ayako and Lady Shani were able to like there when they got when it got to their part they were a lot better. The following oh then they had um they had Dorian Roldan announce the deal with Impact. I don't know if that aired this pat on this Ray the Reyes, but I just thought I would bring that up. Um, that's that's going to be even more confusing because now you have Impact. Impact has deals with with AAA and the Crash, but then they also have people on the on triple on it. So basically, they now have Luchadors and Impact that hate AAA and don't want to deal with AAA, and then now Impact deals with AAA, and now they can't get the half the roster in AAA has deals with Lucha Underground. So basically, now you're and same thing with the Crash. So now it's like they have like this weird mix, this weird f- mix of promotional mix that I think only works for the Lucha World Cup and doesn't really work for anything else. I wouldn't be shocked if Noah gets back and deals with AAA again. For all we know, that's probably already in the plans. Um, I wouldn't be shocked. The The follow-up match on, on the show was Dr. Wagner Jr. and Psycho Clown beating Monster and Murder Clown. Bad. I don't really think you really have to watch that. The post-match, um, Soul Rocker, Carta Brava Jr. and Mochocota Jr. attacked everyone. Um, this is a new faction. They're calling themselves 
el nuevo poder del norte because everybody out, everybody remembers the 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 her, the complete everybody remembers the history of poder del norte i doubt anybody even remembers them anybody watching triple a probably doesn't remember them maybe like the the handful of us who remember watching it basically that's it just weird i don't i don't really get that um the rey de reyes match argenis surprised everyone surprised the world and won the sword he is now the king of kings he's so he's so confident now that he wants to challenge johnny mundo for the triple crown of triple a that's how confident he is i thought this match was really like bad it had um averno chessman bengala elegido pimpinela escarlata la parca joe leader and nino hamburguesa um, i thought the early part was boring Then they got to Averno and Argenis, and that was a lot better. Um, the two things you get from this match is, especially when you see Averno, is like the first thing you get with Aver with is you realize Averno is like in there with guys like Nino Hamburguesa, um, Joe Leader. I mean, Averno was in the hot period of tr um, of, of lucha when he was feuding with Mystico, and now he's like in this match. The second thing you notice is Averno's very professional and put over Argenis really well it made him look a lot better than our hennies really is it's something different i i do i do i do um like that it's different i just think i just think those those battle royals when they do the battle royals it's kind of it kind of shows how how limited the roster is right now in terms of the depth and quality really so you're not really getting and plus i think there were a couple of guys that should have been on the show that weren't on the show but they really have to resolve this soon um triple a this past monday uh, march 27th They debuted a new TV show on TDN, um, uh, Televisa Deportes Network, called Zona Ruda. It's basically a news and information type of show, kind of like Tercera Caída. They basically had um, interviews with Jordan Roldan, Messi uh, Me yeah, Messias. Then they had uh, match highlights, and then they had um, some features on Paraguayo Jr., Monster Murder Clown, and uh, Pepe Casas. So... It looks like it's going to be something that looks like something fun to watch uh, coming up. I, it, I'd be curious to see if they're going to like how it how how well it's going to be um, be received. Because I mean, we're not the TV show. I don't know how the TV show is so bad. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do that. Uh, Chilanga Mask, independent news. Chilanga Mask is going to debut in Chicago, May seventh. I think in on April 29th, I think April twenty eighth, twenty ninth. There's also going to be a show in Berwyn, Illinois with um, Caristico, Ultimo Guerrero, and Gran Guerrero. So if you're in that Chicago, Illinois, you know, I, I, I'm about I'm about as bad in geography as Rob Viper is. So if you're in that area, you can go check those out, shows out. The Chilanga Mass Show on May 7th. May 7th is going to feature Los Traumas, Fly Star, and I think Arrowboy were the first four announced. Um, definitely go check it out. Um, traumas are really good great guys april 9th in in los angeles for the first time in the united states trauma one trauma two and negro navarro are teaming up and they're actually going to be in a really good trios match as they're facing los luchas phoenix star and zocre and jalisco jalisco i'm telling you guys if jalisco who actually wrestled in in mexico in the early 80s and late 70s if he was in mexico city right now He would be re regarded in the, at the at a at a similar le level as Black Terry, Negro Casas, Negro Navarro, Solar, all those guys because this guy's really good. So it, it should be fun to see him work with Negro Navarro, um, Jalisco, really good talented. Um, I remember uh, when we went to a legend show in Los Angeles, I think maybe three four years ago, and he was on the show. He was so good in that match. So he's really good. He's On FML shows we've gone to, every show we've gone to, he's been very good. So that match should be good. Um, they're also bringing in one of the Heredero, the Rey Mysterio guys. Um, this one is Heredero, the Rey Mysterio. I think it's Heredero, the Rey Mysterio, Hijo de Rey Mysterio, and Rey Mysterio, Hijo de Rey Mysterio 3 or something like that. Speaking of Rey Mysterio, there's a new Rey Mysterio character in um, Lucha Libre. As AAA Octagoncito, the most recent AAA Octagoncito, donned the mini Rey Mysterio gimmick on on a Tijuana show this past um, Friday. And um, the previous Octagoncito had mentioned that mini, that he was going to start, that this, the, 
the, the, the current AAA Octagoncito was going to start wrestling as mini Rey Mysterio on indie shows. So at the show, the mini Rey Mysterio announced that he was not gone from AAA and would be continuing in AAA as Octagoncito. So basically, now this whole mess is now we have this guy doing the mini Rey Mysterio and possibly still doing Octagoncito in AAA. Uh, it's confusing. It's Lucha Libre. If it's confusing, it's Lucha Libre, basically. April 15th, Negro Casas is going to be in um, Mission, Texas for Promociones DAC. He'll be facing Corazón del Barrio. <laughs> Where'd they find that guy, man? He's long time uh, Monterey fans remember him. Um, he's, I think he's wrestling still in the between Monterey and Texas, so the, the, the border areas of um, Mexico and Texas. Um, so go check him out. Um, Hijo de Octagon. Octagon is also going to be on that show. Uh, Mr. Aguila, too. Oh, Rip, uh, oh, no, not Ripper. Psychosis Jr. is going to be there. So that should be interesting. What else is going on? The Crash has a couple of shows this upcoming week. They're debuting in Mexico City. Huge show. I mean, they're. I don't even think they're going to make money off this show because they're flying in so many people. I mean, look at it. They're flying in Katsuhiko Nakajima, Matt Seidel, Cody Rhodes, Rey Mysterio. Uh, Ray Phoenix is, has to be flown in because he's, he's now from San Diego. Um, Brian Cage, Bobby Lashley, Carlito, Jeff Cobb, A.R. Fox, Sammy Callahan. Callahan. Mascarita Dorada, I think, lives in, um, in the U.S. also, I think. Jack Evans, Willie Mack, ACH. Let's see, DJ Z. Although I think DJ Z, I think DJ Z is going to be there for a few weeks in uh, Mexico. Because I know he's working a show with um, Gringo Loco on on another indie show. Um, wh- wh- Mr. 450. Um, the Women. Santana Garrett. Candy, uh, Laurel Von Hess. I think that's about it for the people that are flying in. Sexy Dulce is supposed to defend her title, her women's title on that show. But if you follow her on Twitter, after her shimmer match on Friday, she announced that she was that was her last um, wrestling match. I don't know if she means... I guess that's her last women's match and she's going to vacate the title and they're going to hold the that women's title match on, on April 5th is going to be um, her her kind of um, her kind of vacating it and whoever wins that match would win the title. Um, but it looks like a really good show, the April 5th show. The the April 9th show, There's going to be, it's a combination show done by, it's going to be The Crash and Yaves y Candados in Arena Coliseo Monterrey. That show has... Um, fewer um names as far as the the international names but it's actually a pretty good looking card um the main event is Rey Mysterio um Garza Jr. and Penta Cero M versus Nicho El Millonario Damian 666 and Bestia 666 that would be Rey Mysterio's first match in Arena Coliseo Monterrey in like man I'm thinking probably like 20 years maybe well probably less than that but it, it might be actually 20 years I can't even I know they mentioned it the semi main event is Daga and Ray Phoenix versus Sammy Guevara and DJ Z. Um, really good card. Juventud is going to be on the show. X Fly is going to be on it. El Zorro. Loretto Kid. Good show overall. Um, let me see what else is on coming up. Oh, Promociones Cholo de Tijuana, April 7th. Another good card uh, featuring the Negro Navarro Trauma 1 and Trauma 2. Facing Felino, Puma, and Tiger. That should be a good matchup. I know that's that's the weekend. Negro, Negro Nevada and Trauma 1 and Trauma 2 will be in um, in Los Angeles also. Um, so lots of good shows coming up. Dragon Lee was announced as possibly being in the New Japan Best of the Super Juniors for this this summer. Um, that should be a fun, another fun thing to look forward to. Yeah, that's all we, that's all we have this week. I was hoping they'd have the AAA Ray the Reyes Part 2 already available, but they didn't. So, And I wanted to get this out because my thinking is, like, since I do Lucha Talk Weekly, and usually um, they post that, like, on a Wednesday or Thursday, I figure I would do this show at least a day earlier, and I would post it on Monday, and then that way I could mention it on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and it wouldn't, like, it wouldn't, like, over... It wouldn't be like something you would have. You, you, you could you could watch you could listen to both as you go along or, or whatever. Yeah, so that's about it. Next podcast, like I said, Lucha Classica coming up. 
for the it'll be a subscribers only podcast so those of you who subscribe thank you for subscribing and you'll get this show and you'll also probably get that bonus show what else is going to come up I, like i said i think we're gonna we're i'll be posting those interviews on um, the neuro Casas interview and all that stuff in the next couple of days really interesting the mano negra one and casas and and dr cerebro all really interesting they all had something interesting to talk about um Mano Negra brought up his son and his daughter during our interviews. Um, Dr. Cerebro talked about working with Echicero and he actually was, ha he was, I made a joke about, because I think all of us ended up watching the Dr. Dr. Cerebro Echicero match off a of cell phone footage. And he said, hey, you you get it how you, however you can, you know. So um, yeah, look forward to those. Um, thanks again for listening to the podcast. And I guess we'll talk to you again next time. Take care.